What up, everyone? Back in action over here at Keeping Up with the Chaldeans. I'm your host, Junior Bindu, along with my main man, co-host, Anthony Toma. Today, we have a um, awesome guest on who's experienced long time in the community, Wilson Sarkis out of Wilson Sarkis Photography and Cin Cinematography. Yes, sir. I'm saying it correct. So yep. uh, just to let you know, today's episode is brought to you by Level Plus for being the uh, generous uh, contributors to this episode here today. Check out Level Plus for all your realty needs any day of the week, and they're located out of West Bloomfield, Michigan. How's it going, Wilson? I'm doing great. How you doing, guys? Good, brother. Very good. Excellent. It's awesome to have you on today. Well, thank uh, you for having me. Yep, a lot of people know you in the community. You've done a lot of great work amongst the years, and uh, we want to get into talking about your experience and some of the stuff that you've given into the community to uh, to help out with it. And you know where where you're going to be landed in the next 10, 15 years with us. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. So we'd like to introduce uh, Wilson Sarkis. So let's uh, begin with where your journey started. So <laughs> <laughs> my journey started way back in. Uh, in the 80s and uh, I always uh, wanted to paint photos. Mm -hmm. Paint? Paint. Okay. Paint is was beautiful. I still always see paints in the street or in the restaurant, homes, people, homes and things like that and I used to always stop and look at the paint because painting has highlight and shadow. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes painting beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I couldn't paint. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't paint. What was your first drawing that made you I, think you, you know, doing, do you remember that? Doing the face <laughs> and doing the nose and the mouth. I just couldn't do it. Yeah. I couldn't do it. <laughs> so, uh, I kept going and, until I met somebody and I had a, you know, same conversation with him. And I told him that I want to do this and I cannot do it. He said, well, why don't you do it in the camera? And uh, I said, hmm, let me try it. So I did try it for a while until, actually I tried it for almost four or five years. Really? And I made What's a- that, photography? Photography, mm -hmm. okay. yes. Photography. What were you doing before photography? Uh, when I came to United States, I worked in a store, okay. just like everybody else. All right, awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I didn't last too long in the store, but. Yeah. <laughs> Your mind was working too much, too or much, you were too uh, creative. Yes. And then... Uh, so you had a conversation with the guy. Yes. And uh, he said, well, why don't you do that? I tried it for about almost four or five years. Uh -huh. And I, I made a living out of it. So, and uh, But I always knew there was something wrong in there, in my photos. I always knew this. They're just like everybody else. Sure. You know, just like... John Doe take the same pictures and I was taking the same thing. Nothing to separate myself from other people. Curious, what what camera did you start with? The little disposables? Oh, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> Back then, uh, we were taught. It was like this. Yeah, 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 like big this. cameras. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, what yes. <coughs> uh, we were taught back then that, listen, uh, square format, which is uh, the Bronica, the Hasselblad, mm -hmm. the Mamayas, uh, all these cameras, they were... Uh, they are the weddings cameras. Got you. If a wedding photographer doesn't care what are those cameras, he's not a wedding photographer. Sure. So, so I. That was a myth, obviously. Absolutely. Right? Okay. Absolutely. So here we are, and you know we had to use films. So the films they were either twelve exposure or tw twenty four exposures. Mm -hmm. So as you know, twelve exposure and twenty four days is not enough. So you have to buy multiple backs. So each. Each box had, uh, you know, they, they sold 12 photos in it, and some of them, they were 24 photos. So when you're shooting a wedding, you have like 10 film back next to you. Once finished, you, you, you pull it up, you put it down, you take the, the full one, and you, you insert it. Sure. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it was uh, a lot of work. <laughs> I remember. But you, you remember that, right? Yeah, because yeah. when we were young, yes. we used to go to the communions and weddings back in the days. <laughs> and then you used to see that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So on break time, for example, uh, 
between session and session, we go back and reload. Mm -hmm. So, so, and uh, you know, the film, they were big, so you had to make sure that you have a bag and they are in safe spot. And the thing is, is that, you know what the hardest part was back in the days? Mm. Is that when you uh, took a photo and you wanted to try your technique, you were waiting three to four, sometimes six weeks. To develop the film. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So by the time. Think about yeah, so you yeah. didn't know whether yeah. what you were doing right yeah. or wrong. It wasn't like. No. And the, yes. Yeah. These days they have it so easy. Yeah. Sure. So any technique that I worked on, I had to wait six weeks, five weeks. Sometimes, you know, we had a lab in Toronto that they were printing for us. And uh, they used to take two months. <laughs> so by the time you know we get it back, is uh, is like I am in the next steps. What yeah. I'm, oh my yeah. Gosh. So can you imagine? Today you're already flooded with calls <laughs> when they're waiting for their pictures. Back then mm -hmm. they're pounding you from yes. you know my yes. God. Two. Sometimes just to wait a year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, like if you imagine trying to do that today. Yeah. Yeah, don't oh, forget man. the retouching on the photos. Uh, they had specialty people, which is there were not too many people doing retouching, very, very few people. Mm -hmm. And when you sent a print to them, we have to wait in line. <laughs> Sometime three, four months yeah. for yeah. her to, you know, she get a chance that to work on your work. Yeah. So it was not as easy as today, where no. today people just hold the iPhone and they take sure. photos. And if they like it, they like it. They don't like it, they take another one. Yeah. 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 So, but the quality is much better and more advanced now obviously than, than than it was back then i mean you well, you yeah. could create the gradient yes. feel yes. now yes. On, yes, with absolutely. a flick of a switch yes yeah. well it is it is uh film will film uh will uh, be the best ever will nothing will compete with film really yes nothing even hollywood today they use film more than digital so only thing Hollywood use in digital is digital effect mm -hmm. and uh, digital future movies. And why why is that? Why is why film because more uh, film holds itself quality. quality much better than digital. Okay. So for example, you talk about raw shooting raw and, and shooting JPEG. Yep. So JPEG is pretty much what everybody shoots these days, mm -hmm. except photographers for a living they shoot raw mm -hmm. so the difference between raw and jpeg jpeg is kind of compressed okay so think about you gather 20 information and you compress them in one you cannot touch it anymore because once you start touching it start breaking you're losing. yes you're losing okay. quality mm -hmm. where you shoot raw you have room to play with each level oh, wow. with the highlight exposures gotcha. and all that stuff and it doesn't break as much where film, it does not break. It's true quality the whole way yeah, around. All the way. And you're saying, you're saying so right now, in the theaters and movies and stuff like that, in cinema, that's widely used still? Absolutely. Is, till, is today, it, and till today, there's a lot of uh, directors, they love shooting film. And is that what you do with your equipment on your shoots? Is you still stick with film or have you I, gone I don't digital? shoot with film because the, the system that we have... Yep and uh, the staff that we have, yep. I cannot separate film from digital. So either we all shoot film or we all shoot digital. Sure. That way the workflows stays the same way. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, definitely. Mm -hmm. Because you're super busy, right? You're... We are. Yeah, yeah. We are. We are in the wedding business and uh, we stop at 50 wedding a year. We don't take more than 50. Wow. And 50 is just healthy. Uh, plus we do... We do filming, we do digital, yeah. Um, yeah. we do uh, commercials, we do short documentaries. Okay. And during the winter time, that's all we do is cinematography. Sure. We 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 have a sister company that we work with. Uh, we do a lot of stuff for National Flag Football. Yeah. And Adler Automotive, and we have the Detroit Library that we have a contract with them. Wow. Uh, and then we have a few attorneys that we do stuff for them. That's good. So we work with Chaldean Chambers. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. So you're averaging you're averaging two weddings a month. That's what it seems like. If you're doing fifty a year, you're doing yeah. Average. So, but our season starts from. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm yeah. gonna say four. One yeah. a week. Yeah, four a month. If I average one a week with that. Yeah, but we, our season starts from uh, 
last week of March and ends in November. Okay. So it gets a little heavy sometimes. Some month we have uh, 10 weddings, 12 weddings. Wow. Yeah, sometimes we have, um, sometimes we get Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. And, and, then, and, and, and so it's not easy to shoot uh, three, four days in a row. Even two days in a row, it is very hard. Uh, so I rotate staff. Gotcha. Uh, I'm used to it. Right. So I have a system for myself and my body how to to, to balance it in these uh, weddings. Yep. And uh, not too many people can do three, four days in a row. It's very hard. So if you're doing 50 a year, say, that's your average, how long in advance do I have to book Wilson? We, uh, we book about a year, year and a half. So okay. now I'm booking 2021. Okay. We are okay. in, in February 2020, and we are booking 2021, August, September, October. Where, where, where do you find sleep? <laughs> when do you, when do you sleep? Because I well, was everybody used, tells me that yeah. when do you do when do you do sleep? When do you do your vacations? And you know, I try to you know in the winter time when I have a job, let's say I do uh, about four or five run to Florida. Okay. To do some jobs. So between those, I I take some time off and Enjoy. just rest and. Uh, yeah. Regroup myself and come back. Yeah. But in the summertime, once that March starts to, to November, is very, very hard. It is too many hours. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I, I got used to it. If you don't balance your body, if you don't ba balance your mind, mm -hmm. if your you life. don't, yes, because family you, life. Yes, absolutely. You know, you have I, have, kids. I, have, I have blankets. Yeah, grandkids. Uh, grandkids, wow. yes. God bless. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, See, the difference between our studio and what we do and other people don't do <coughs> is that we are the original creativity. So uh, I, I wanted to bring memories to my clients. I want them to have great memories with their photos. I want them to look at it and, and enjoy every minute of the photos they're looking at it. And uh, these memories, uh, they can last them forever to them, to their children, to grandchildren. That's what I wanted to do. And then, you know, the lefties, they come and see what we do and try to copy it. And the lefties are who? <laughs> I'm saying. So, that, so <laughs> these the are the newer was... people getting into the business and yep. looking to. Yes, to... Uh, there's a lot of new people coming to the business. Uh, it's okay. It's yeah, okay because, hey, uh, I'm here today. I might not be here tomorrow. Mm -hmm. sure. But uh, I do advice that whoever wants to photograph whoever wants to do photography for a living must understand what photography is first right mm -hmm. and always yeah. always improve on their craft like you do like you put in time and absolutely and you're always learning you're yeah. always bringing in new things you're always trying new yes. things and that's the hardest part yeah that's what takes a lot of energy from me that what am i doing tomorrow right because let's say we shoot 50 wedding now you have 50 different couple, mm -hmm. 100 different personality. Yep. So everybody is different. We try to provide different to everybody. Mm -hmm. Whatever it suits you, sure. that's what we're trying to do. Sure. We don't shoot uh, Junior's wedding like you know, Anthony's wedding, mm -hmm. like John's wedding. So everybody is different. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to... Uh, to give that, uh, you know, yeah, a little bit difference on there. You were saying, it. just to touch on it, because obviously, you know, you you gotta to do this for the long the longevity of what you've been doing it for. You gotta have to have love and passion for it. Absolutely. So go back to what you were saying. What is photography to Wilson Sarkis? Photography is everything to me. Um, photography, you know, they say you eat, you sleep, and mm -hmm. walk. You do everything. I mean, I drive down the street. To, uh, a lot of time and and I learn my learning comes from amateurs mm -hmm. because I see what amateurs they see but they don't see it in, in cameras okay for example how many times you drive down the road and then you have a camera in your hand or your phone and you say oh I like that spot I'm gonna take pictures if you take the pictures mm -hmm. and you drive and you want to show it to your friends and family but you didn't see what you saw Got you. Happened to you before. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. All yep. the time, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So what, what human eye sees is totally different what camera sees. Okay. Camera, how, how so? How so is that, is, for example, 3D against 1D. Okay. So three dimension against yep. one dimension. Yep. So how can you... Um, how can you make that scene in three dimension through one dimension for for you to enjoy the scene? Sure. It's sure. not as easy people think. No. And that's uh, that's what's the difference between pro and amateurs. Gotcha. Because amateur can grab a camera and just walk down the whole event and you know snap photos of people minglings and mm -hmm. talkings. Mm -hmm. That's that's not a title of photographer. Sure. Yeah. So what's the, what are, what are some of the what is the technique that you can help create a three D effect on a one D? Well, lighting. Lighting. Lighting, absolutely. So before we got started, you talked about lighting, and you and you talked about how important lighting was, and you showed us how important lighting was when we did the uh, the opioid uh, uh, episode, and and you. You, you really took a lot of time, and we appreciate the you time that you welcome. took. You, I mean, you put in pr probably, you know, more hours than we did <laughs> getting us set up, when, and we really do appreciate that. You are very welcome. So, I'm here to help. Yeah, actually. thank you. Thank you. And so talk about lighting a little bit and, and what it is and how important it is. Well, lighting comes, uh, lighting comes like, uh, it's very strange. So you must see it. For you to understand lighting. Mm -hmm. So if you walk into a place, for example, and there's windows in the place. So let's say the window is coming from north. The north side of the window is more softer because the sun goes south all the time. It starts from east and then drops to the south. You notice that, right? Mm -hmm. So on the south side of the window is always strong because the sun is coming wrapping it sure. out of the window. Yep. The north side of the window where is the softest light mm -hmm. and that's what you want to be at. You can be on the sun side but you have to challenge yourself with flash because the okay. only time you're gonna beat the sun is by using a flash or some kind of source of light powerful okay. enough sure. to overpower the sun. Sure. So the best part to go is you, you go to the north side of the, the window and you will understand um, to shoot in that window and make sure that, well, when you go to the window, once you bring a subject next to the window, mm -hmm. you're going to start realizing there's a, there's a brightness and there's darkness. Sure. So now, of course, a lot of people don't like darkness. Right. They like the bright side all the time. So how can you adjust to that window right so what i've seen in the past from you know other photographers that once you put them in the room uh if they seen a window on the east side of the room they cannot adapt to this window is on the north side so they are it's like you cannot move that wall yeah and move it to this side right. or move it to this side sure so this is what separates People understanding lighting in photography, and people just uh, and it just won't give them the depth that they need or the or the absolutely. focal point on the on the subject, right? Yeah, absolutely. Of the, lighting. the lighting is very, very, very important, hmm. and lighting is uh, great uh, racial. Uh, you know, have you seen sometime you see the subject's face is bright, and then the uh, on the left side is way way dark right. yeah so that's the ratio is one let's say just give it uh, an example one to eight yeah mm -hmm. <clears throat> meaning with the first the one is bright and the eight is dark yep. so for you to balance so you start adding light to come from sure the, my left side mm -hmm. sure until you get it where the best light is going to be one to three so it balances it yeah so a couple times after our set we take pictures when yes. we're up here mm -hmm. with our guests yes um, our cameramen have pointed that out too, and I never understood it. But now that you're telling me, yes. sometimes my right cheek yes. would come into a little bit of a of a fade, and Mark would acknowledge it and say, "Wait, we got to take it over again, or you know, be, or moving a little bit this yes. way to yeah. catch it from what we've got." Yes. 
I want to touch on just real quick what Anthony said was, um, first, we do want to thank you. You did help out tremendously with that opioid crisis. Can we talk about the Zao June thing, too? That's what I'm saying. The Zao June is also, you did a hell of a job with us, with our camera team. You gave us the opportunity to be able to get into the little room to do some interviews. What I took on, believe it or not, don't get me wrong, I appreciated everything you did, but the You're thing welcome. that stuck to me most at that moment, which people didn't get to see because you were busy doing your thing, was you're a guy, like you said, who likes to help, right? Absolutely. So you're the giving hand, not the receiving hand. Absolutely. I saw you do that in front of me to a up-and-coming camera person that was there mm -hmm. who was taking our photography, for, uh, the photo shots for mm -hmm. us over there. Mm -hmm. I saw you walk with him. You took your time out of everything that was going on and we're showing him how to work with the lighting from different poses and sets and had me taking some of the pics with him as he was doing it back and forth. And that was a free skill set you gave to him. You know, that could have been something that he may have never caught on to it, but as a veteran to a rookie, you were able to give that. And he, he may not be as much of a rookie as much, you know, we say, but he's still coming up in the industry, but you gave that to him. How does that make you feel to be able to just constantly help and give that expertise out? Uh, to me, I tell you the truth, uh, uh, I, I love helping people. Sure. Especially when I see a photographer that is struggling and, um, you know, I can walk to him. The best photographer mm -hmm. there is, is the photographer that listens. Mm -hmm. If a photographer doesn't listen, mm -hmm. just walk away. <laughs> this photographer sure. will never we'll learn. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He will never mm -hmm. learn. Just thank you and have yes. a good day. You yep. know, which is whatever we do in life is yep. the same thing. Yes. 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 But whoever is going to listen out there and listens from a, from a good photographer, knows what he's saying, mm -hmm. just take, take the experience and, and learn from that moment and add it to your tools because yeah. you're going to need it as you grow. Because whatever you see on the internet, only thing you see in is that pretty much how to take the photos right? and where you put your light. Again, we're going to go back to that east window. Mm -hmm. If the light is on the east window <laughs> and that's all you learned and that's all you saw on YouTube, yep. when you see the light on the north or the south, you cannot move the wall. It's the same thing what I'm trying to say. And uh, again, just like how you said, I've been in this business for so long and you know, I stay current with the, yeah. with the new generation mm -hmm. and I try to provide to them as much as I can provide their style. I tell you the truth, I bring only thing to the table is my experience. That's huge though. Your experience and you, wisdom. you've amassed a ton ton of equipment yeah. which is if you have the right tools you can you could pull off the, the proper shot or the proper video or the yeah. proper everything and and there wasn't a, a tool or a or a or a piece of equipment that you did not have i appreciate it you know, well you know, you know that's what everybody that knows me out there in this business they know i'm fully equipped mm -hmm. When it comes to this business, right? Uh, I, I'm you got shy backup away. on top of backup absolutely, on top of backup. That was the craziest absolutely, thing absolutely, ever. Absolutely. The coolest and, thing that I got to experience <laughs> was we got those Bluetooth mics that we were oh, yeah. doing and made it that much easier. I was like, what the hell is this? Yeah. When well, they're coming to clip me on, I felt like I was going on to a set of Good Morning yeah. America. <laughs> That's the latest uh, wireless microphone in the market. Nice. Right. Uh, so, yes, only thing I can bring to the table is my experience. And, and absolutely, when you have that you know giant equipment behind yeah. you that's what all the time my 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 associate they tell me how easy you make this because because you because exactly all the planning yeah. absolutely and the knowledge absolutely. and the experience you, you know what to expect absolutely. you know what mm -hmm. to expect and then you plan for the unexpected and and you know what what's the other thing is that people uh panic yeah Panic on the the most important sure. moment. Yeah, right. And there's one thing I taught myself is there's no panicking. Yeah. Sure. Because if you panic, you lose it and everything else falls apart. Yes. Of course. So the clients always like to see somebody in charge. And what and I control. noticed it yes, in control. Absolutely. And what I noticed it from my clients, the reason they come to me, they know that I have it in me. Mm -hmm. And and I I see it. They talk about it that, sure. you know, with the Caldea wedding. Hey, Wilson can take control. Yep. You know, can organize all this, can organize our day. 
We don't have to have any problem. Yep. He managed time. You have to manage time at the wedding. Day. Yes. If you don't manage time, yeah. five minutes, it is the most important five Shift minutes. Shift everything. Absolutely. So when we when when you came along for the Zhao Jun uh, yeah. event, you know you were just there to help us, which was of course much appreciated. appreciated. As soon as we walked in, you just started. This is what we should do here. This is where we should go there. You should go there, and you better utilize these. And let's take a picture of the food, and let's do the bit of the bit. And you just you just <laughs> went into like flow. B gear mode. Like it was like like I'm and then it turns out we set everything up the way you said it, and. Everything worked out perfect. Came out beautiful. Perfect. Yeah. So thank you. Thank take, you. Take, as soon as and we were sitting there, and you're like, you look and you said, "Hey, we should grab these chairs for the opioid uh, uh, episode." <laughs> yeah. That's I think. Why won't he go? Why can't he get you these chairs? I said, oh, "Let's ask him." And well, so that, I always think ahead of my time. I yeah. always think ahead. What this? The, remember when we talked about I drive and I learn? Yeah. yeah. And that's exactly what I'm trying to tell you is that. I drive down the street, right? And I learned just me just driving, and driving in the daytime is different than driving at night. Sure. Uh, I learned lighting at night by me driving because what I do is I use the light pole mm -hmm. as a, my main light. Mm. Gotcha. So I want to see where's the ratio comes in from sure. one to ten. Sometimes you drive down the freeway or down the street. And there's light after light after light after light bulb. It's like downtown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you see the lighting pattern on those totally different where you drive down the Doherty's where there's a light and then the next light is three blocks. Sure. So what's the difference between that lighting and the lighting that you just saw down the freeway? Did you say Doherty? Doherty. Doherty Drive. You are you? That's where you live right now. I, I used to live on Doherty. <laughs> we grew up over there. That yeah. was yeah, in the seventy-seven up. Even still, our mom's house is still there. That's how I met your brothers. Yes. Oh my God! I didn't even, <laughs> look at that. What I just learned right now on the set. So, a Anthony saw it. I I saw it because we were able to experience you from a different end of I it. Appreciate you're, it. You're calm and collective, right? You're calm and collective. The way you work, you flow smooth, but. Not all your clients can be smooth and calm and collective. So because you're so calm and collective, how do you deal with, to say, our bridezillas <laughs> or, or anything in that fashion? Like how groomzillas. Or groomzillas, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, Actually, the groomzilla is really worse than <laughs> <laughs> He's a bigger beast, right? He comes Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, Have you ever had Mr. and Mrs. Groomzilla and Bridezilla? Yes. Say wow, the Zilla. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Zilla. The Zilla family. The Zilla family. <laughs> so, so how do you handle, like, what's your experience to handle that? And does it usually turn out good? You know, at the end, I mean, you know, you just uh, made a great point. We're going to talk about this. Uh, so before um, I used to come to the wedding mm -hmm. and I used to bring 100 percent talent. Uh -huh. And I used to when I when I bring 100 percent talent, I forgot about my clients. What does that mean, 100% talent? 100 is what you love to do. You just bring it with you and you concentrate on it. Mm -hmm. And you don't think about nobody else, but I do this, I do this, I do this. That. Okay, got you. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. So the difference between myself and everybody else, I taught myself that I need to understand people. Sure. Mm -hmm. I need to understand what I am I doing here? Yep. So I had to teach myself psychology. Yeah. So I stopped bringing 25%, 30% talent to the day of the wedding and bringing 75 or 70 psychology to understand everybody else. Yeah. Understood. And if you don't do that, yep. you just shot yourself on the foot because yep. you're not... You're not doing what your clients are asking for. Yeah, of course. It's not a it's not a day of business. It's it's a day of emotions. Absolutely. And emotions are running high. Absolutely. Yep. From the mother, the step I mean that stepmother, oh, but the, the mother in laws. -in -laws. It's, mother in laws, it, yeah, it, and, the, yeah. and the bride, the groom. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so and I, I, I start understanding there's a lot of butterflies in there. Yes. With the brides and especially when she put her dress on. Yeah. Right. And I taught myself that I'm gonna do more stuff before she put the dress on. Sure. To concentrate on a different style. So I started with this new style. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know, um, you know, buying a nice robe before she put the sure. wedding dress on, and uh, do a nice session with that just to make her comfortable. Mm -hmm. So once she put her dress on, she's still comfortable with me. Yep. But I know what's coming. Sure. So until she sees 
you know, the first look with her husband. Yep. And then she feels much better. And of course, uh, we created all that stuff. You know, we are we we are the first one who created that. Uh, we do all the photos before we go to the church. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I learned that 30 years ago in a seminar that uh, the speaker said one thing, good things. He said, the makeup's fresh, the photo, the, the flowers fresh, yeah. the, the dress is clean. You smell beautiful. Mm -hmm. Everything. Your hair is great. Everyone's you haven't good. lost nothing. Yeah. You do your photos before you do go to the church. That way you can have the best photograph. Yeah, and, and you nobody know nobody got high. Nobody smells like weed. <laughs> What's that? I don't know. <laughs> to, to, to touch on what you said, you're, you're correct. It seems like as entrepreneurs, we get so um, into our skill set that we think Anthony's supposed to know what I know, right, right. Right. and I, Wilson's yeah. supposed to know what I know. I'm supposed to know yeah. what Wilson yeah. knows. You know, yeah. we tend to forget that. In this country, we use the term, you dumb yourself down a bit, right? It's not meaning that I'm knocking to say you're not, you know, it's just someone's not as inclined as we are. We forget that because we want to just pawn off Absolutely. all this skill set. Yeah, you got to strip your knowledge down and put yourself in their shoes. Like, yep. what would they be thinking right yes. now and how are they thinking? And, and what don't they know and how can I transfer that knowledge to Absolutely. them and, and mold them into something yeah. that's going to come out beautiful in a, in a yeah. capture in a video or, or so we learned which was yeah. great that was a great great career move because you understood your clients and that's I, big. And, and made a big difference in my business sure. and uh, you know uh, we start picking up the clients that they were looking for that yeah and, and this is where we start concentrating that's good for you yes. you got to understand people yeah. and by doing so it, it increased the levels of what you do so these days, things have changed up a bit, right? Yes. We're out and about. We're, we've got these phones now. They've got mm -hmm. crazy, you know, mm -hmm. pictures, this and that. So we all think we're photographers these days, right? Because yes. you've got this button that says filter this, yes. do that, yes. do that. To say what you're saying, you know, if somebody just wanted to, could they start with something like, like this these days to learn off of this and then start getting experience? Or do they have to have more of more of like your 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 SLR or your, your SLRs or your your, your, your you DSLR know, DSLRs? Can, you know your your larger cameras. Is that what makes up the the major difference? You know, iPhone is a great great tools. Sure. I mean, is uh, is what they they made iPhone exactly like a human eye. So what I'm trying to say is that. When you take a photo with the iPhone, mm -hmm. there's no difference between the sun and the shade. It captures both. You noticed it? Okay. Yes. Where the camera doesn't see that at all. It sees only the sun or you want to see the shade. It do does not see both. Okay. So for you to learn in the proper way, yes. you have to understand that first mm -hmm. before you move on. Because you can shoot with iPhone, but that goes back again to the beginning. What we talked about is that a lot of people grab the camera, mm -hmm. take a pictures, yep. and think they got a pictures yeah. because they shot with the iPhone. They don't, yep. they don't understand the difference between the sunny part mm -hmm. and the shade part. I got you. And camera, camera doesn't see that. Camera, people don't understand something about camera. Camera is a very, very smart tool and can trick you one, two, three, and you don't even know. Yeah. And that's how it is. Because camera camera is made exactly like your head. So let's say your head with no ears, no nose, and no eyes. That's the body of the camera. Okay. Now here I am, I'm adding tools to it. I'm adding my lens, is your eyes. Okay. And then the shutters inside of the camera is comes in from your nose and your ears. And that's what what cameras completes. Gotcha. So your eyes, your nose, your ears, and your head, your brain. That's the inside of the camera. It's a complete. It's a complete form of yep. it. Yep. So years ago, be, because of me being with one arm, I never was able to get your DSLRs and use and stuff like that because you've got to have the focus and autofocus is not really something you look for if you're becoming professional. You want to be able to to angle and zoom in from you shifting your lens. Absolutely. So I used to buy those digital cameras back in the days. We'd be at Blue Martini and I'd be taking pictures. And damn, if I, <laughs> I could not get away, you, it was so good, you would see the lint in the air mm -hmm. on the picture sometimes. Do you know what I'm talking yes, about? Yes, yes. I mean, what causes that? And how do you, like, like, 
is it because I'm using that digital camera versus a DSLR camera? You know, like, and they're both digital, but one is, you know. Well, again, there's, uh, you know, uh, beginning uh, stages in everything. So there's the beginning stages in cameras. So that you can buy a camera that uh, has a flash on top of it, can pop up anytime you want it. Sure. And you can have, uh, you know, point and shoot cameras. Yep. So there's a lot of different uh, different tools that you can use. But when you once you start calling yourself a photographer, mm -hmm. I'm a photographer. You have to move on to uh, good tools. Okay. Because the good tools are going to make your photos much better. Sure. Plus, not just the tools, you need to have the knowledge how to use that tools. Of course. Because people can buy People, I know people, they have the best, they have equipment better than mine, mm -hmm. but they don't know what to do with it. Yeah, yeah, that's understood. Like yeah. I, I, And sometimes, I, you know, me and my brother Sam, we talk about it, and we say, I wish I had that camera. Yeah. You know, it's, it's more expensive, mm -hmm. sure. but it's not, a, it's not that I cannot afford to get it. Yeah. It is not made for me. Sure. So, so I have to purchase something that is made for me that's going to make my job easier and much better. I got you. You talked about the the head. So so most photographers or photography studios that are sold, they sell you the housing and then you add on the the, the lenses and the flashes the and all that stuff. So well, yeah. so so you're you're buying something catering to your technique or your shot My or your skill set, absolutely. your needs. Absolutely. So so glass is what you what you said you were taking photos in the club or whatever, you know. Glass is the lenses, or we call it glass. Uh, glass pl plays a big role because mm -hmm. good glass is amazing. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do? Uh, for example, I'm just going to give you an example. There's a glass 2.8, 1.8, mm -hmm. 1.2. That means the aperture's opening on it the, the, for the depth of field. So the, the smaller the number, the bigger opening. So it goes backward. Okay. So the bigger number, the smaller opening on the lens. So for example, if you are shooting 1.2, you are bringing a lots of lights in. Okay. Because it's more brighter. Now that's the aspect ratio, is that what that's No, no, that's the lens. We're okay, talking about the glass. Okay, okay. So the glass, there's a different glass. There's okay. a glass 1.2, 1.4, 1.8, gotcha. you know, there's now they're making point 0.9. That means every time you see a number is coming down, yep. that means it can handle itself in a darker area. Okay. So the smaller number, that the faster the lens where it can go into a, you know, dark area club, right. you know, weddings with no light, not yep. too much lighting, that you can use without using uh, another light source. It works in the filming and the video more than photography. Got you. Where is that, let's say, you know, you have a lens that starts at 5.6. Mm -hmm. So 5.6, 1.2, or 1.8, that's a big gap. Big gap. Mm -hmm. The 5.6 cannot handle this kind of quality of shoot. Okay. It will fall. It will not produce. It stop producing grain mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the film or in the photo. Okay. So, and so, so I was gonna say some of those lenses, don't they make it the difference of how we see things on a regular video versus cinematic? Like where you can make it more. So, so that's depth of field. Okay. So what you see is what you're telling me is let's say if you're trying to like shoot cinematic, yes. Yep. So what you're saying is that let's say if I am in focus and he's not in focus, it's kind of blur in the background. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this is, goes back to your glass. If, it's, if your glass is 1.2 or 1.8 or 1.4, mm -hmm. you start creating that depth of field. Okay. So depth of field works in the glass where the smaller number, you have stronger depth of field. So depth of field works, let's say, for example, uh, from 1 to 3. Mm -hmm. If you are at 1.2 or 1.4, you are focusing here. Mm -hmm. This guy and this guy will be out of focus. Shooting from what direction? You're talking? Like if I took it from, from here right from, now, from what it does is it blurs those two in blurs. the back and brings this because one. Because your depth of field is so tight. For example, if you are sitting here, you are kind of force yourself 
and focus on focus on me. Yeah. If you focus on my face, junior's, junior's a blur. blur. Right. So it's the same technique. They took that same mentality and they added to the glass. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And so, but that's intentional. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Like that's that's the beauty point. of the photos. If you see some of my photos that uh, that uh, we're gonna show, is that you'll see that blur in the background. Mm -hmm. I did it on purpose. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Which is great. I did one uh, with a candle for uh, one of the interviews where I didn't post it, but I focused on the candle and the box that it sat on, and the wood table and the curtains in the background were somewhat blurry in the back is what mm -hmm. I ended up getting to that. I, you know what? I uh, was kind of 5 o'clock wedding, and we were, uh, was I believe it was sometime in October, and uh, the bride came out of the house, and she walked down the sidewalk, and her mom and dad, they came after her, right behind her, and they stood on the porch. They didn't follow her. And I saw that that moment. And that's yeah. absolutely. And I couldn't resist. Right away, I put my camera on 2.8. I knew exactly what's my exposure. You know, when you shoot for a long time, yeah, you know you what's your exposure. Know, quick. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's quick. It's a yep. split second because, yep. I mean, how many steps she's going to walk on those uh, sidewalks? Yeah, so. Immediately, I took that shot. It was the most beautiful shot where she was focused. She was smiling. And she didn't even know that I was taking it. And her parents in the background just leaning this way and looking at her. Oh, yeah. wow. That's like that perfect candid. Like, Peace yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're, they're wishing yeah. her farewell. Yeah. Just, you know, yeah. bye, bye. Just, they were hugging. You know, the dad had a, his arm behind his, mom, uh, his wife. And they were just leaning to look at their daughter wow. walking down. It was amazing. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. You know, you, you were mentioning, so I want the, the, the audience to know, you, um, you're a great guy in the community. Thank you. You, you give your hands in to help. This came about, you were with Majid, Anthony, we were sitting, and I passed you guys up at the restaurant. Yes. And you said, we got to do this. We got to let the community know about the crisis we're having. We got to get this out there. And, I, and as you're firing off, the, the, you know, my, my, my eyes lit. And I'm like, yes, listen, look at this. Look at his passion. But what what are talking about? What, what, what's that? The opiate what crisis. crisis. Oh, okay, I'm saying gotcha, what, what gotcha. opiate crisis when he helped yep, us with yep. it. The way that came to be was you saw it in him. Mm -hmm. You saw that I gotta help our community. Can I help you guys? And that's where it came yeah. about. Was was we were sitting there and said, you know what, Anthony, I do have something going. You pledged right from that day that that you were gonna help us out. Other things that you may do within the community that we can take note that you may want to talk about, or maybe you put your hands on that people don't know what Wilson does. You know, uh, I'm very humble, mm -hmm. and uh, I love helping people. Mm -hmm. And anybody that's have any question about. Photography, my, my our studio is open. Nice. Any any time, they want to improve themselves. Uh, they want some of our technique, our experience. Sure. We can pass it out because, I, like I said, I'm here today. I might not be here tomorrow. So, right. uh, the community needs something good because if we don't bring this style to our community, by the way, I love my community. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, I love the Chaldean that. community. We know this. Yes. Yes. I mean, I. Uh, uh, I sometimes I don't want to say that I refuse different jobs to stick with my community. That's okay. Yeah, That's you okay. know, people ask me why don't you go, go to LA and, and 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 you know we have a good vision in cinematography and uh, and do something in LA. Uh, I say no. <laughs> this, okay. is, this is my this town. Want to leave this us. is my town. This That's is my so town. just kind of playing off that that like you care, you are willing to help. You are have a Thank magnificent you. skill set. Your your knowledge is well beyond you know most photographers. Why don't you teach a class or something? Why don't you put a school together or something like that? Yeah. Where even if it's not a school, but it may, maybe formal, informal, whatever the thing yep. is, why not teach the next generation and the generation next? For I'd them? sign up. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, I would. I, well, I mean, uh, I mean your just technical knowledge is so much. You know, yeah, so I so so. It. I mean, you see everything, so why, why not pass thing. that on? Well, we are thinking about, uh, okay. you know, in, in a few years when I uh, slow down in what I'm doing, gotcha. that's one thing we're going to concentrate because I, ha I had, uh, by the way, I did teach with PPA. PPA is a Professional Photographer America. Oh, wow. So if you go uh, on their record and there's, I've, uh, I was a, a instructor with them uh, for a while mm -hmm. and... Uh, I taught exactly what you were saying. Uh, when you go to seminars, you, you'll see us. Yeah. You see my myself, my brother Sam, uh, 
sure. that we are very involved with these. Uh, my brother Sam is involved with a lot of competition. I don't do competition. What I does just, that mean, competition? Well, in, in, in photography, there is competition uh, program where you can enter uh, your oh, masterpieces, oh, okay. masterpieces, okay. and you can compete uh, in a net. Where, where do we find him? Where, where do we uh, find some of his work out there? Like Sam? Yeah, like, so, like Sam, the Sam some has a lot of. Uh, he he won a lot of awards. Really? Yes, Sam. Uh, my brother Sam has a lot of great uh, masterpieces. Nice. Yep. He, he's in. Uh, what are they up? What is he shooting? Like what are some of he's these in the wedding business. So, so the so the wedding photos he enters into into competition. Okay, wow. absolutely, nice. yes, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. And has he been pub pub absolutely pub published? Yeah, published. there's a lot of books that uh, if you Google and if you can search for Sam, you'll see him. But to me, uh, I am the opposite. <coughs> yeah, I am the opposite where I I don't I don't do competition. I don't. Yeah. Gotcha. This is not me. I uh, I believe is uh, that. I want to produce talent. I want people to remember who I am. Yeah. Sure. What did I do? I don't want people to remember my uh, my things on the wall. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't want to show my trophy right. when I'm not around. I want mm -hmm. to be able to, you say, oh, Wilson was a great photographer. Just like I mentioned, you know, all these great things about me. I really appreciate it. I want pe people to remember my my talent. The legacy of, of, of Wilson Sarkis. This is it. Because uh, awards and stuff like that, they stay on the wall, they collect dust, and nobody's going to see them. Mm -hmm. Are you at this point in time, as uh, you know, you're looking at your next phase, possibly, like you said, teaching and all that stuff, is there room for interns right now with you? Are you looking for people yeah, to get on board absolutely. with you right now? Absolutely. Or not even just interns, even full-time, if, if, if it's uh, anything, and if so, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? They can reach us uh, at the studio. Uh, mm -hmm. We always look for editors, and uh, we always look for... Uh, uh, as shooters okay uh, don't forget uh, there's one thing about photography is that once you start mm -hmm. and you start collecting bad habits mm -hmm. it's very hard to get rid of yeah gotcha. and this is what we face a lot of time is that we bring people in yeah and people is just like they are a horse in the track one way mm -hmm. they don't on yeah, blinders yes up. absolutely yep. uh, and and we know from our experience is that Whatever they doing, they need somebody to hold their hand and mm -hmm. say, "Okay, here we go. We got to do it this way. We got to do it that way." Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it doesn't work uh, this just only one way. Right. So if people willing to listen, yeah, and they mm -hmm. have an open mind, they are very welcome to You're shy. To teach absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Is there um anything that we may have? missed on the overall uh, interview with you stuff that we didn't touch up on or other services that you may offer that we we skipped over you know we are uh we, we are you know we wanted to expand our horizon in our business and we wanted to explore different options and just recently we uh we filmed a new cannabis business nirvana off of flint and we were very, very excited to work with them. It was a different look, was a different mind, something that is was very interesting to work with and to, to, to learn from. We also worked with some famous people, uh, some athlete. We worked with Derrida Dehu on a couple of documentaries. And uh, we did work with Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Tom Izzo, Greg Kelser, and it was a great experience. Just great experience to be around successful people and just to learn from them how they became success. Anything you do to interview somebody's success, yep. you can pick up some tools, some experience from sure. them. And the more tools you pick up, the more you, uh, you educate yourself, the more you become better. Yes. And you know, just be open mind. Yes. Because if you're not, you're not gonna be able to work with people. And this business is a people business. Yeah. And plus you're an artist. Yeah, at the for end sure. Of the day. Yeah. So earlier you said you love being Chaldean and you love your, our people. So what does it mean to you? This is how we close out much more. You know the shows. What does it mean to you to be Chaldean? Um, uh, of course, uh, I am honored to be a Chaldean. And uh, Chaldean, Chaldean. What I like about them that uh, they demand. They demand from you more and more and more. And this is where you take that tools and you become better and better and better. Yeah. Because if they don't demand from you, you're gonna just sit 
and whatever you were doing 30 years ago, and if they are satisfied with that, then guess what? We are not moving forward. Right, sure. So the one thing that I take from our community is that I want different, I want different, I want different. Yeah. And you know what? Once they push me, that's when I, I just love that uh, challenge to where I can out. move to. Yes, absolutely. Wilson Van Gogh steps up. Yeah. That's what it is, <laughs> the, the artist. Beautiful. I appreciate it. Awesome. Well, you know, we're uh, happy to have you on. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's great to be with a, we'll consider you a legend in our, in our well, thank community. Thank you for having me. You, you've been out for a long We've time. We've seen a lot of you lately. Yes. And, and, and that's all <laughs> on your own happy. time. Well, if on there is anything time, I can beautiful. help in the future, yep. make sure that uh, you guys let me know. Thank because you. Because I like to see quality product out there, yeah. sure. especially from our own community. Sure. We don't want to just produce any quality, any product. For people to review and you guys yeah. doing a tremendous job by the way great Thank job you. what are you guys doing bringing people in here to get to know people we're following you, you. <laughs> and what's nice is you've you've donated some some equipment to us too and we, I, we appreciate that that's yep. no problem and there'll be more to donate thank awesome. you thank you well today's episode is made possible with the generosity of the guys at level plus realty uh make sure you guys subscribe and uh if you uh get a chance you can hear us on Spotify, iTunes, you can listen to it anywhere on the road, wherever you go. And if you're looking for sponsorship opportunities, look us up at KUWTCaldeans.com and you can see the full information there. It was awesome having Wilson Sarkis from myself and my co host Anthony. See you all in the next episode. Awesome.